Gateway Real Estate Africa, or GREA, which is uh, partly owned by South Africa's largest asset management firm, the Public Investment Corporation, the PIC, has uh, completed more than 400 billion US dollars, that's 5.8 billion rands worth of developments across Africa in less than three years. The company was uh, founded by the co-founder of London Stock Exchange listed Real Estate Investment Trust, or, or REIT, uh, GRIT Real Estate. Greg Pearson. Greg, uh, welcome to the show. You've raised more than 200 million US dollars in equity and debt to fund your expansion in Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, and Mauritius lately. And I, I can tell you're probably in Mauritius uh, with that shirt that you're wearing at the moment. Firstly, what's the attractiveness of African property markets uh, right now? So, um, yeah, I am in Mauritius at the moment, so I thought I'd stick with a, a tropical theme. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think. Looking at real estate in Africa at the moment, um, you know, there, there is still a need um, with regards to the data centers that are coming up across the continent, um, the specific embassy um, accommodation that we're doing. So we still see that there is a buoyancy in certain sectors of real estate. Um, we are involved in hospitals as well within Mauritius and looking into East Africa as well. So there are still things to be done uh, in real estate. Obviously, retail has uh, had a curb in the, in the last couple of years, as it has across the globe. We have felt that in Africa as well, um, but there's still a lot of markets that are in its infancy at the moment, and we're taking advantage um, of those opportunities. So talk to me a little bit more about that uh, and where GRIA plays. And data centers is a big one. Uh, warehousing, one can imagine, with the rise of e-commerce, that's certainly going to get a boost in the wake of the pandemic. Where do you see the, the real opportunities for GRIA in Africa? So, interesting enough, what we do is we provide a bespoke real estate solution for our clients. So, as long as we've got that counterparty strength and the US dollar income, uh, we sector agnostic. But what we also do um, and what we have followed is data centers for one. Uh, we have got a large rollout of data centers in West Africa at the moment uh, with the likes of Liquid Telecom and that's moving into East Africa now. Um, the other sector that we have been really focused on is uh, embassy accommodation. Um, so all facets of accommodation that is required by by the American embassies and the Swiss embassies uh, across the continent. Um, and then within the um, medical um, sector as well uh, with regards to, to hospitals. Um, so, you know, what we've done is we've tried to stick with uh, with with almost counterparties that have been sticky to the African continent through these pandemics and the likes of a global pandemic doesn't have such a big knock right. um, on the typical stakeholders and clients that we've been working with uh, through Africa to date. And that model sounds to me like a de-risks entry into uh, new markets as well when you're dealing with those counterparties who are familiar uh, with the local conditions on the ground. That said, what does one need to consider when investing into Africa? Because we've seen some REITs, some local REITs get burned in the past, particularly around shopping malls. What do you think is the most important thing? Is it about understanding the counterparty, kicking the bricks on the ground? Absolutely. Um, on ground uh, uh, presence is paramount and also understanding partnerships. So if you look at um, us to date and our, our success to date has always been through partnerships. Um, every country in Africa has it's got its own cultures, it's got its own nuances, and we need to understand that before we go and invest in these countries. So typically a due diligence would take us six to eight months of a, of a country that we're entering, and also with our uh, track record and what we've done across the continent, we use a lot of partners in, in every country that, that we're investing. So if you look at Mozambique, you look at Mauritius, you look at Ghana, we've got people on the ground that are local, um, uh, and what we do is we try and build up our office uh, mm. around that offering and uh, we understand what those local partners uh, bring to the table um, so yes we might have a global best practice that we try and bring into the country but we also need to adapt that to to the nuances of that country and i think by having that approach where it's a more welcoming approach and seeing what we can do together has stood us instead for the you know the the leapfrog that we've we've been able to get in africa over the last five to seven years and Greg, you obviously do a lot of traveling through Africa and you're in Mauritius currently uh, and I'm sure you get to see firsthand the impact of COVID uh, across Africa. In the main, what has your impression been with the way African governments are dealing with COVID and the impact that the pandemic is actually having across Africa? 
Yeah, it's actually a bit of a standing joke. The amount I've travelled at the moment and the amount I've quarantined, I've probably quarantined half uh, half of this year and I've had 51 uh, uh, PCR tests. So I'm probably one of the most <laughs> tested uh, individuals in the world right now, never mind just Africa. But, um, yeah, if you look at uh, the way that we've been able to travel, um, you know, Kenya has really set itself up as a, as a hub for, um, for traveling across the continent. Um, so we have... We are making that a bit of a, a hub for our business. But, you know, I've just actually come out of Kenya uh, a couple of weeks ago. Moving through the city of Kenya as well as down onto the coast uh, was done with absolute ease. Um, the way that they have set up mobile um, testing uh, for COVID has been unbelievable. Traveling uh, intercontinental as well, so from east to west with regards to Nairobi, I mean, Air Kenya or Ethiopian Airlines has really been uh, an ease compared to a lot of the first world countries that I've traveled in in the, in the last 18 months. So I think what the African governments have done really, really well is try and push forward with um, as much opportunity as possible, but also finding that fine line between protecting the, the people of the country and also managing the amounts of income that they can uh, bring to their homes. So if you look at the construction side we've got in, in Kenya, yes, we've had a slight delay with regards to timing on completion, but, you know, it's pushed out by maybe 5 to 10 percent. It hasn't been, you know, diabolical compared to what our initial program was. Same goes for Ethiopia, similar goes for Ghana. So I think Africa has been really resilient in the way that they've managed that. They're trying to roll out the vaccines at the moment, um, so doing the best they can with the, with the tools that they're given. But it has been a pleasure to continue to work uh, in these uh, jurisdictions. Well, that's really encouraging to hear, and I think something that uh, African governments collectively really can be rather proud of. Uh, now, just as we've got a minute to go, Greg, if you look at some of your key partnerships and projects that you're currently working on across Africa, what really excites you over the next 12 months? I think, you know, if you look at data centers and where it is at the moment, um, there's just so much to go through. So the more that we can collaborate and, and, and get some guys uh, to, to team up, um, I think that space is going to be huge. And then what we do, be investing beyond the fence line with that, everywhere that we put in new data centers, there's huge power requirements, there's massive energy requirements. And what that does for the local community is, is also awesome to see. So. You know, I think in that space, there's, there's a lot going on at the moment. Um, and if we can continue to create these big uh, real estate platforms across Africa, in the short term, I think that's going to be a good um, uh, a platform for uh, global investors to come in. And I think what it does in the local communities and uh, the CSR part of our business um, is, is quite awesome as well. Um, just with a project in Kenya at the moment, we're working with an a, a NGO called Build Per, where we've taken women in construction uh, and we're training them through a, a specific program with our partners there, Verdant Ventures. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of exciting uh, times to come, especially in the real estate sector uh, across our continent. Well, great story, and you can see why you called yourself Gateway Real Estate, because it really does become uh, a platform or a gateway for so much other uh, good to flow from these huge pro uh, property project developments, uh, not only for the investors, and I'm sure the PIC very happy at the moment, but for the surrounding communities and for the broader uh, African economy as well. That was Greg Pearson, CEO of Gateway Real Estate Africa.